Greetings and welcome to the Golf Betting Show. It's Steve Bamford here from Golf Betting System. I take it that you are well. We are covering this week the 2021 Waste Management Phoenix Open. Welcome to the show. The Golf Betting Show is for viewers of 18 and above. Please be gamble aware. You can visit begambleaware.org for more information and of course, please bet responsibly. Welcome to the show. Now, if you're new to the show, the Golf Betting Show is eaten every week. We cover the PGA Tour. Sometimes we throw in the European Tour as well. Uh, European Tour covered in depth as well by my partner in crime, Paul Williams at Golf Betting System. Golf Betting System is a completely free resource. Previews for both this week's events in Saudi Arabia, which is loaded, and this Waste Management Phoenix Open. We have loads of tournament statistics. We have first round leader stats. We have predictor models. We have a podcast. It's completely free of charge though. And the only way we can keep it free of charge, why we don't charge a membership, is the support of you guys. And what you need to do, subscribe to the show. Make sure that your notifications are switched on. Um, like the show. I'm thinking about doing a live show. Let's set a target. If you can deliver what should we say, 125 likes this week. I might do a live show. Let's let's look into it. But I need you guys to demand that. So 125 likes, I'll look into doing a live show. On top of that, so like, subscribe, and of course, I just want to know you're who you are backing. So use the comments section below. Great comments each and every week. It's great to have a rapport with you guys. And conversations with you guys so let me know your feelings on the waste management phoenix open last week absolutely um, packed tournament farmers insurance at torrey pines patrick reed wins by quite a number of shots but there was a lot of action there in terms of the saturday uh, shenanigans that went on uh, but also you know victor hovland was right in the mix john ram got to uh, was he level at one stage and went backwards? Um, Rory was in the hunt. There was a lot of quality elite players. Tony Fina, of course. As we said in last week's show, a quality player always wins at Torrey Pines. And this year, it was Patrick Reed. So, Reed, another one of these guys that hadn't won for a period of time. I think it was February last year, so 11 months Um since his last victory, Ryder Cup year, bang, on a classical golf course. As I said in the video as well, suits different styles. You, it's funny. You had Mark Leishman, who won last year at 55 to 1. He went in there having, I think, finished second for strokes to gain tee to green at the Sony Open. You get Patrick Reed, who was absolute garbage from tee to green. Um, missed the cut at the American Express, but his game is all about from 100 yards and within. He actually drove the ball very well at Torrey Pines this week. Drives the ball well. Brilliant from 100. I think, is there a better player from 100 yards in, in terms of the wedge play, in terms of the scrambling, in terms of the putting? I don't think so. He's an old-style player. He doesn't pop strokes gain models. And the fact of the matter is, he won again. Very short price, though. Uh, looking at my records, 25-12 to 1 for Patrick Reed, And that's what put me off. I like Patrick Reed at 50 to 1, not at 25 to 1. That was his shortest odds or price victory. The only one he's had short was 22 to 1, the 2015 Century Tournament of Champions, which of course is a very short 30 34 man field. So if you look at it in terms of a full um, field event, that's his shortest victory, 25 to 1. But well done if you did have Patrick Reed. We clocked Ryan Palmer. Yes, good, my friend Ryan Palmer, who cannot win to save his life, but you've got to say the guy's playing some great golf, and I was just praying with Ryan Palmer. He didn't hit the lead. He didn't. He just stayed behind. He had a quiet Saturday. I think he was shot one over 73. And because he didn't have the pressure of winning and he knew that Reed was going to win, all of a sudden just plays a nice, calm, two under back nine and gets us a T2. So 60 to one each way return last week. On Ryan Palmer. Okay, so we've gone through uh, the like, subscribe, and comment. Let's talk about this week's 
event. We are Waste Management Phoenix Open. This is the tournament where they can have anything up to 600,000 fans in attendance over four days. Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday. The course itself is the stadium course. It's TPC Scottsdale. Um, it's in Arizona, naturally. It's a Tom Weiskopf and Jay Morrish 1995 original with a, right, a Weiskopf uh, redesign in 2014. That, for me, that 2014 redesign has just made it a tad more difficult. Um, and when I say difficult, we're, we're looking at 15 to 17 under wins this regularly. Listen to this. Simpson 17 under. Fowler 17 under. Woodland 18 under. Matsuama 17 under. Matsuama 14 under. Brooks Kepka 15 under. So 15 to 17 under, that's the way it's going to be. They make it nice and scorable Thursday, Friday. And what you just tend to see is they just let the course dry out. So by, thir uh, by Friday, um, Saturday, and especially Sunday, you're starting to get some real run out on those fairways. And the greens start to release a little bit. Some really brilliant risk and reward holes. Everyone talks about the 16th. I love the 17th. Absolutely love the 17th hole. I think it's one of the best holes in professional golf. It's a desert course, of course, as is in Arizona. It's played at altitude. It's a par 71. It's 7,261 yards, which at altitude is as short as you like. Greens are large, 7,100 square feet on average. Um, we're looking at Bermuda grass, uh, fairways and rough with a bit of perennial rye and fine fescue. Two and a half inches this year around, which I think is about half an inch down on where they usually are. The greens themselves also seem to have subtly changed this year. Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass. Everyone says they're Bermuda grass greens, which they are Bermuda grass base greens, but they're overseeded and they're overseeded every single year. Now, up until this point, they've always been overseeded with velvet bent grass and poa trivialis. Velvet bent grass on an overseed of a Bermuda grass green. So, you've only got to look at Hideki Matsuama, who, is, who I say year after year is absolute garbage on Bermuda grass greens. People go, oh, but he, won. he didn't win on Bermuda grass greens. He won effectively on bent grass overseeded greens here in Phoenix. So, um, but this year, the velvet bent grass has disappeared in the overseed. So we're actually looking at Tiff Eagle, Tiff Eagle Bermuda grass greens overseeded with Poa Trivialis and Rye grass. So I think they're going to be a little bit grainier, a little bit more Bermuda grass. So that could work to certain people's advantages in this field. Um, greens like that, so Bermuda with Poa Trivialis overlay, We've got to look at PGA West, where they played the American Express a couple of weeks ago. We need to look at TPC Sawgrass, where they played the Players' Championship. And we also need to look at Copperhead, Innisbrook, where they play the Valspar Championship. There will be others that I've missed there, but they're the three golf courses where I can relate Bermuda Poa Trivialis overseeded greens to. Okay. Um, it's not an overly difficult, it's one of those courses where if you're playing brilliant golf, you can absolutely take it apart. If you're, if you're, where, if you're absolutely um, wayward off the tee and poor with your approach shots, you can rack up big numbers around it because there's lots of water in play. Um, I was amazed here last year that Tony Finau had the audacity of making a playoff. Uh, T4 Tony, of course, uh, came close again this week, didn't win. Um, he had the audacity of making a playoff here, where you've actually got uh, six holes with water in play. That really isn't Finau's mix. Again, Torrey Pines last week, uh, 17 holes, no water in play. That's, wh that's where you're back, Tony Finau, if you fancy a T4 finish, of course. So, that's the course. So, we've got into quite a bit of detail there about the agronomy. I, it'll be interesting to see if there's any change in the fact that they've taken away the velvet bent grass off these greens. Weather... Nothing to report. Chilly. Uh, chilly Thursday, Friday. Uh, sunshine. Um, a little bit warmer at the weekend, up to something like 20, 21 degrees. Um, no wind. There's been a bit of rain in the build-up. Last week, I think I saw something like 18 millimetres. So I wouldn't be expect. I wouldn't be surprised to just see a little tiny bit of cut in those fairways. But they'll have total and utter control of this golf course. And, of course, it's going to become a 15, 17 under par golf tournament. Right. 
Top 10 of this week's predictor model. Of course, golf betting system, free of charge. We have predictor models for both the European Tour and for the PGA Tour. There is no payroll, uh, paywall. You can use them as many times as you want. Paul and I always use them when doing the research for our um, weekly previews. If you're watching this, of course, on YouTube, which you will be, I have put a, a new link into the top of Golf Betting System. Just click through there to get all of the content or just search for Golf Betting System, Steve Bamford, Paul Williams tips, anything like that, European Tour tips, PGA Tour tips, you'll come across the Golf Betting System website. Now, top 10 of this week's predictor model. For me, um, the, it's a very difficult betting heat. What I will say is, that at the top of the market, the prices are just general. Pretty much every bookmaker has got the same price on the leading four, um, or leading five even. Um, what we all, what we have found, Betfred, I think Betfred are a great balance this week. Seven places each way a fifth the odds. Seven places, so two additional each way places on the each way betting this week with Betfred. And some great prices. And we I mentioned Betfred a couple of weeks ago. They definitely have stepped up to the mark on golf betting like this in 2021. And also the latter end of 2020. So if you haven't got a Betfred account, well worth having. If you're in the UK or Northern Ireland, you can access via Golf Betting System our website. A, bet £10, get £30 of free bets offer. And because you're signing up through Golf Betting System, you also get an additional 60, 60 free spins at Betfred Casino. You need the promo code SPORTS60. Full terms and conditions, of course, available on the golf betting system website. Is this worth having? Betfred, I think they do offer some standout prices. Their odds compiler undoubtedly pulls his own odds together and has some real opinions on certain players, which often leads to the best price in the market. Take James Hahn. He's tenant the predictor model, James Hahn. There's some big prices in this. Latter end of the top 10. James Hahn, 200 to 1 with Betfred, seven places each way. These are the best prices right now. I'm recording this early Tuesday morning over here in the UK. Nine is Stuart Sink. Another 200 to 1 shot. Of course, he's already won this season. He's 200 to 1 with William Hill. They're eight places each way. Eight, Sam Burns. This guy, he's a talent, isn't he? But he just cannot stick around on Sundays. Sam Burns, I thought 80 to 1 was a decent price on Sam Burns because this golf course in terms of ball striking and high GIR. And Bermuda Grass Greens is right up Burns' street. 80 to 1 with Unibet. Six places each way for Sam Burns. The only thing that put me off Burns, will he be able to just deal the consecutive week after being in the final group, or second final group, or second final group, on a Sunday and blowing another contention? Seven, Harris English. I was close on English, it has to be said. 28 to 1 with Boyle Sports, 8 places each way on Harris English. We did get back in 2011, Mark Wilson winning in the Sony Open and then winning this a couple of outings later. English is miscut, just, but what have they done to the price? 28 to 1, not a great deal. He's kind of made for this golf course, Harris English. Six, a course specialist, Martin Laird, the Scotsman, another winner this year. A hundred, uh, this season, I should say, 150 to 1 with Betfred, seven places each way. And then six through ten, some juice, juicy, juicy prices there. Laird, English, Burns, Sink, and Hahn. Top five in the betting all come out top five of the predictor model. But that's statistics and that's predictor models, eh? Um, five is Rory McElroy, 11 to 1 with Betfred, seven places each way. 11 to 1, eh? Don't forget, Rory's last victory on the PGA Tour was at 10 to 1 at the RBC Canadian Open in 2019. Because he's got no course form, all of a sudden you're getting double digits on McElroy. Tempting, has to be said. Four is Xander Schofle, another 11 to 1 shot. William Hill, eight places each way at four. Three is JT, eight to 1 general price. Two, John Rahm, 13 to 2 favourite general price. And number one, the defending champion. The defending champion who proved last year you don't have to be a complete bomber to win around Phoenix. And we've seen that also with Ches Revia over the years, haven't we? Metronomic and Matt Kuchar. Metronomic fairways and greens, ball striking. 
Don't have to be a complete bomber here. Webb Simpson, 14 to 1 general. So Simpson at 14, Ram at 13 to 2, Justin Thomas at 8 to 1. It's a very split predictor model. Top five in the betting, top five in the predictor model. You've then got some value there with Laird, the likes of Burns, Sink and James Hahn. Of course, you're more than welcome. Golf betting system, come and use both Saudi and Waste Management predictor models this week. Okay, let's talk key skills, shall we? I'll, I'll tell you, lead score progression It's a new part of my preview, actually. It's pretty mad here. Take 2020. The lead after two rounds was 13 under. The winning total in the end was 17 under. And that's what I'm saying about all of a sudden tucked pins and faster conditions. Uh, 2019 when Ricky Fowler won. 13 under after round two. 17 under after round four. Uh, 2018. 10 under after round two and then 18 under. So it's one of those tournaments... I think you've got to start well here. I really do. Right. Key skills required around here. I go through both traditional and strokes gain stats since they redesigned the course. The first winner of this on the new Weisskopf renovation was Brooks Kepka. And you actually look at the winners list here. Kepka, Matsuama, Matsuama, Woodland, Fowler and Simpson. There's a story there to be told. If I take the average... Um, so if I take the winning skills that they uh, they actually went through when they won here and then average them out across those six years, driving distance, the average in the field of the winners, 20th, driving accuracy, 20th, you cannot be flagrant around here, greens in regulation, 5th, proximity to hole, 13th, scrambling, 13th, putting average, 16th, so... Putters, it's not, well, it's obvious, isn't it? You know, you've got Woodland, you've got Matsuama. Um, they're not exactly the best putters in the world. So, greens in regulation, maxing out a, a, an average of the winner here, fifth place over the last six years. And let's look at it from a strokes gain perspective. Strokes gained off the T, 11th. Strokes gained approach, fifth. Strokes gained around the green, 30th. Strokes gain T to green, fifth. Strokes gain putting, wait for it, wait for it. Strokes gain putting, 21st. Um, it's like any stat, isn't it? I mean, Matt Suama, strokes gain putting 29th and 47th. Gary Woodland was strokes gain putting 16th. Uh, Ricky Fowler topped it when he won. Strokes gain putting last year, Webb Simpson at 12th. So 21st in all. What it effectively says, though, it's an appro it's a it's a total um, ball striking golf course, and approach play is absolutely vital this week. So it would be good if we went through the top um, my eight week skills trackers. Now this now takes us, I believe, we've got rid of the Masters where there was no strokes gained available. We're now onto the RSM Classic. Uh, in terms of the window going backwards. So what I do, eight-week window, I look at all the key skills from driving accuracy, greens in regulation, putting average, right through strokes gained as well, where people come in the field and we pull together our, our eight-week trackers. Now, on a golf course where greens in regulation is absolutely critical, let's go through the top 15 this week of our Greens in Regulation 8-week tracker. I'll go in reverse order. T14, Henrik Norlander. Could be made for this course, Norlander. And Xander Schofle. 13 is Cam Tringali. 12 is Kyle Stanley, a former winner here. 11, Daniel Berger. 10, Lucas Glover, that's gone very well here in the past. 9 is Corey Connors. 8 is Siwoo Kim. Tied 6, this is crazy, Luke Donald and Justin Thomas. Top six of a green to regulation tracker, Luke Donald. Four, Webb Simpson, winner here, and William McGirt. Three is Kevin Streelman. Two is Rory McElroy, who we haven't been seeing in this green to regulation tracker for a long, long time. So his game is definitely about right. And number one is JB Holmes. Don't forget, Brooks Kepka won here on debut, and there's loads of players that have done well in. I think Rory's going to love this golf course. JB Holmes is number one. 
so that's greens in regulation. Let's go strokes gain, shall we? Let's go strokes gain on approach. Again, the top 15. Strokes gain top 15 last eight weeks in this field. 15 is Russell Knox. 14 is Padre Harrington. We include the European Tour in these numbers. 13 is Russell Henley. 12 is C.T. Pan. Tied for 10th, Cameron Tringali again. And Will Zalatoris. 9 is Siwoo Kim again. 8 is Kyle Stanley again. Great approach play. 6, Keegan Bradley and Rory McIlroy. Five is John Rahm. Four is Corey Connors. Three is Henrik Norlander. There's another mention. Two, JT, who's come very close here. And number one, Xander Schofle. Strokes gained approach last eight weeks. Strokes gained T to green. The, the Nirvana of strokes gained stats. Over the last eight weeks, let's go through the top 15 again. Strokes gained T to green. 15 is Brendan Steele. One of those players has got a fantastic record here in California on desert golf. I think he's anything up to 80, 100 to 1 still. That could be a steal. Uh, 14 defending champion Webb Simpson. He was number one in this list 12 months ago. 13, Cameron Tringali. 12, Keegan Bradley. It's the same names, you won't be surprised to hear. 11 is Sam Burns. Burns's game is far more strokes gained orientated off the tee. And he's actually been scrambling well. Everyone says, and it's true, his strokes gained around the green game has been garbage, but he's been working on that, clearly. 10 is Siwoo Kim. 9 is Chris Kirk, who's been playing some great stuff. Kirk's a good one. Tie for 6th, Daniel Berger, John Rahm, Will Zalatoris. 5 is JT. 4 is Corey Connors. Three is Xander Schofle. Two is Ricky Fowler. 50 to 1, must tempt a few. He hasn't had a top 10 now for over a year. And number one, that's what puts me off, Rory, uh, off Ricky Fowler, to be fair. Um, we love Ricky. Barry Hohanrahan, uh, his biggest fan uh, on our Golf Betting System podcast. That'll be coming out later on the YouTube channel. Um, but the trouble with Ricky is he's, he's the one of the worst converters in the business. And he struggles to convert when he's been playing at the very top of his game, like top five finishes, a consecutive run of great finishes, eventually gets the job done. When the, when the man hasn't won for over, <laughs> hasn't even top 10 for over a year, um, I can see him finishing in the top eight, yes. Uh, and number one, strokes going tee to green. It won't surprise you. It is Rory McIlroy. Why didn't I put him up this week? I haven't. So McElroy, Fowler, and Xander, the top three. And strokes gain total, strokes gain current form. I'll go through the top ten. Ten is Michael Thompson, who delivered a nice 125 to one each way for us a few weeks ago. Uh, nine is Corey Connors. Eight is Ryan Palmer. A good course record here, Palmer. Six, tied four, Chris Kirk and Webb Simpson. Said he was playing some good stuff. Five is John Rahm. Four is Daniel Berger. Three is Will Zalatoris. Two is Rory McIlroy. And finally, Xander Schofle at number one. Before I go on to my tips, tips, I'll also read you out the historic odds of previous winners here. We can go right back to Hunter Mahan, who won at 66 to 1 in 2010. But I think uh, it's more relevant. Let's go from Baby Walrus one around here, 125 to 1. That's the biggest price in the last 10 years, 125 to 1. So, 2015, Kepka at 40s. Matsuama, 28s in 2016. He then defended at 11-1 to 1 in 2017. Woodland at 50s. He was outside the world's top 50. 53, I think he was in the world, Woodland at that point. 2019, Ricky Fowler at 22-1. to 1. Simpson at 14-1. to 1. Take the average of those players. The last seven renewals, so that's since the split in the PGA to a season, 41-1. to 1. If you go for the last four, Five uh, or the last six, I believe it's 25 to 1. Now, I got a valid question last week uh, how can previous odds have anything to do with the expected outcome of a tournament this year? Well, you can't directly attribute it, that's a fair point. But what it does do, it basically tells you where you're fishing in the market. I always think something like the American Express where we were having a average odds of 125, was it 140 something to one, to one 
of the winners, um, why would you be chasing a, a, like a 15 to 2 chance? Um, you'd be fishing in deeper waters. This year, of course, Siwoo Kim wins it at 66. is deeper price. Um, I think the price at the Sony Open was pretty much bob on. We were looking for a putter who had been hitting plenty of greens recently. I completely miss Kevin Na. You know, I like a good miss. Uh, and he won at 80 to 1. So there's definitely something in it, in my opinion. So I think we're short. Unfortunately, that price profile of the odds here suggests that we are fishing in very poor waters when it comes to price this week. I mean, Webb Simpson was outstanding prior to this. He was so obvious. He was the third favourite. No one fancied him because 14 to 1 was far too short on a bloke that hadn't won for a couple of years. And he won the tournament. That's that kind of breeze block in the middle of the head uh, golf tournament, I think. So, where am I at? Well, at the top of the market, I've included, uh, not Rory McIlroy, I've actually gone for Xander. Xander Schofeli, three points each way, 11 to 1 with William Hill. No one will back him. It's an awful price. There's no value in it. But one thing you must say about Xander is, he is playing outstanding golf right now. He is in the top eight for strokes gained T to green this season. Uh, he's ranking six in the FedEx Cup. Uh, he is ninth for birdie average right now, sixth for scoring average. He's just playing some really fantastic golf in terms of um, strokes going off the tee, 36. Uh, approach play, 25th. Uh, he's ninth for strokes gained putting and he's eighth for strokes gained tee to green. If you're looking for strokes gained total season to date, he ranks number two on the PGA Tour. He reminds me so much of Webb Simpson last year. The only player beating him so far is Bryson DeChambeau in that strokes gain total category. He's obvious, but what we have seen here recently are winners that haven't won for a period of time. Don't ask me why I'm only reading the facts but Simpson hadn't won for 20 months before he won this at 14 to 1. Fowler at 22 to 1 hadn't won for 23 months. And Gary Woodland, when he won at 50 to 1 here, bearing in mind he was outside the world's top 50, he had been winless for three and a half years. Xander just fits that mould. He's playing outstanding stuff. And the other thing here is, and this is one thing I mentioned towards the top of the show, but haven't gone into in detail. You look at Simpson, Fowler. Woodland, Matsuama, Brooks Kepka. US Open. It's just stares you in the face. Simpson's a winner. Fowler runner-up at Pinehurst in 2014. Woodland a winner in 2019. Matsuama a runner-up at Erin Hills in 2017. And then, of course, Brooks Kepka, a two-time US Open champion who also has finished second and fourth in his last two US Opens. Xander's record at the US Open is absolutely first class he has finished 12th 10th and 12th uh no he hasn't sorry i'm reading the wrong thing he has finished 17th 10th and 16th here in three appearances two of those though he's been fifth after 54 holes i just think he's due his fifth pj to a win i don't think you're going to get zander's next win at a great price um, he's become a bit like the Matt Kuchar at the current PGA Tour. But Sander, I can't. When he's come here in the past, he's come here off of a very disappointing Torrey Pines, which is his hometown, his home golf course. Buoyed by second last week. No fans on the course, no arranging of tickets and all this rubbish. Plays a decent round of golf there. No pressure on him. I just think Xander, with that forward momentum, he's due this week. I really do. So Xander Schofield at the top, 3 points each way, 11 to 1 with William Hill. Next up, another player that's a real all-rounder. And we know that he comes to the party on Bermuda grass. Fifth this year at Kapalua. Third twice at Bay Hill. That's a big boys golf course. Fourth at Copperhead. Don't forget those Bermuda Poa Tribulus Overseas Greens. Second at the uh, Country Club of Jackson, the Sanderson Farms. He's had a 6th and a ninth at Sedgefield Country Club. And he also won the Honda Classic last year at PGA National. 
Um, his record in the desert isn't stellar, but it's good. 12th, 10th and 12th at PGA West. Don't forget those Bermuda grass overseeded with Pover, Pover Trivialis Greens there. He actually led there two weeks ago after 36 holes. And you just look at him across the board. He's outstanding. Um, he hasn't won, of course, since the uh, Honda Classic, so that would be 11 months. And also, so far this season, runner-up at the Masters and fifth at the Century Tournament of Champions. He's percolating. He plays a lot of golf. He ranks 13th for strokes gained tee to green this season and 14th for ball striking. Sung jae -in. I've gone two points each way, 33 to 1 with the William Hill, eight place each way on Sung J Im. Now, you'll have heard this guy's name mentioned quite a lot in um, the eight week strokes trackers. Um, he's an awful putter, but this guy is absolute class from T to green. In fact, you could say. From, uh, from from T to approach play. Yeah. Around the greens, his game isn't great, and the putting's awful. Now, you listen to this for, el for elite strokes gain numbers. This is from last season. 13th off the tee, 12th for approach, 18th for tee to green. He was 20th on the tour for driving accuracy and 6th for greens in regulation. He never finished in the top 10 between January and the end of last season in August. That is madness. Absolute madness. And why? Because he was 181st in strokes game putting. But this season, 17th at the Sanderson Farms, 8th at the Elite Zozo Championship, a top 10 at the Masters, his first ever major top 10, 10th at the RSM Classic. He then had a hi hiatus. Uh, and came out last week at Torrey Pines on Cabbage Patch Greens, where Paul Putters were, what, what's going to happen there? But he finished a solid 37th on his 2021 debut last week at Torrey Pines. 28th for par breakers so far this season, 15th for ball striking, and 6th for greens in regulation. Those are numbers I really like. He is 28th for strokes gain, T to green so far this season, and... Lo and behold, he's positive for strokes game putting at 104th on the tour. Whether that lasts, one thing I will say about this particular individual, though, he tends to putt better on Bermuda grass greens. His win at the 2019 Texas Open came at 20 under, 268 shots. Uh, they were Bermuda grass greens, which again were overseeded with Velvet Ben Grass and Poa Trivialis. Second at the 2018 Sanderson Farms at 17 under. He's, he was third at the 2019 Sony Open, where he was shot 17 under. So he's just outside the world's top 50. I think he's 59th in the world. And in my eight week strokes gain tracker, he ranks fourth for approach, fourth for tee to green. And ninth for strokes gained current form over the past eight weeks. 66 to 1 I found him at. Um, let's have a quick view on that actually. Because I'm sure there's an 80 to 1 price point out there. I haven't tipped him at 80 to 1. Uh, because it will be... Yeah, 80 to 1 right now available. Six places each way. With Unibet. I have placed him though at 66 to 1. Uh, 70 to 1, sorry, 8 places each way at 50 odds with Betfair Sports. But Corey Connors, the Canadian, a, a guy that can drive the ball and, and, and pull together approach play, which is super, super elite. It is an absolute marriage made in heaven here at the TPC Scottsdale golf course. Now, I was going to leave it at those three. I was going to leave it and then... Last minute, I thought, well, that's the kind of thing you do. And I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to change. I'm trying to not argue with players. I, my, my, my easiest trick is finding players I like and dis, dissuading myself out of backing them. But I just, in the end, I just thought, 
put a saver in. So a point each way, no, not a great stake. 45 to 1 available. At seven places each way, our friends at Betfred. I just went for Will Zalatoris because this guy is absolutely outstanding. And yes, he's young. Yes, he hasn't won. Yes, um, you look at his Corn Ferry record, it's just full of top five and top seven finishes. One win. But you just cannot argue that this guy is playing outstanding golf. Um, he ranks uh, all over my strokes gain models. It has to be saying. Uh, strokes gained on approach. We've got Zalatoris in the top 10. He's tied with um, Cameron Tringali. He's also um, topping the strokes gained around the green. Strokes gained T to green, you will find Will Zalatoris in sixth place, tied with Daniel Berger and John Rahm. And then strokes gained total, strokes gained current form, he sits at third in my tracker, behind only Rory McIlroy and Xander Schofle. We mentioned earlier about this US Open link. Well, the one thing that, well, there's more than one thing that's impressed me. But you look at him, Morikawa, Wolf, Victor Hovland. We've almost become now a custom. We're going even back to Jordan Spieth, John Rahm. Players that played themselves onto the tour at a crazy young age. We're used to it now. This Zalatoris guy is doing an unusual thing, though. He's just unusually fantastic. Um, you think about it. He, he, he landed uh, sixth at the winged foot to US Open. 8th at the Corrales Championship, 5th at TPC Summerlin, last time he played in the desert in Las Vegas. Um, he's now got special temporary membership, he can play wherever he likes in non-invitational WGCs and majors, and he can pick his own schedule. One thing he can't do though, um, he's not in the FedEx Cup. A win would blow that away. So yeah, of course, Zalatoris must be... Just picking the courses he knows he's going to play well on that suit his game. And he's going to try and get his first PGA to a victory. 45 to 1, Zalatoris. The guy is absolutely red hot. And so far on the PGA Tour this season, he ranks fifth for strokes gained on approach and fourth for strokes gained T to green. Why wouldn't you include him? So Zalatoris at 45 to 1. Connors at 70 to 1. Im at 33 to 1, and Xander at 11 to 1. Those are my four players for the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Thanks for watching. The Golf Betting System podcast we later will be out later today on this YouTube channel. Give it a listen. I'll be uh, presenting the show later today with Paul Williams. He'll be covering the Saudi International. Of course, I'll be talking through the Waste Management Phoenix Open and all things golf betting for the week. Don't forget, though, please subscribe. Please uh, let me know who you fancy this week in the uh, description box and the description box in the comments box. And if we can get 125 to 1 likes this week, I'll seriously think about my first ever live YouTube show. Why not? Thanks for watching. See you again next week for, I think it's the AT&T Pebble Beach tournament. I doubt it's a problem.